Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Today what we're going to talk about is the currency revaluation feature which we have within Business Central. Now just a quick introduction to this, um, it's only used where you transact with um, foreign currencies on your Business Central environment. Um, it's usually run at company level, so if you have multiple companies you'd need to run it multiple times in uh, each of those companies. Um, and usually, I guess you run it at month end, um, and it basically revalues your um, customer, vendor, and bank account ledger. Um, so let's get into it. I mean, um, the first thing I'm going to talk about here is just um, the update that's coming. So I'm going to come into my feature management screen here, and I just want to show you this line here. So that's the feature update, um, enable use of new extensible exchange rate adjustment, including posting preview, okay? So this is a change which is coming in in update 26.0, so Q2 2025. And if you want to, you can go ahead and enable that. Obviously, I would do that in a test environment first. Um, so, so if you want to, go ahead and enable that. You get a little bit more functionality in that, a little bit more freedom than you do in uh, the existing um, foreign currency revaluation report. Um, so that's the one that we're going to be using today. So I'm going to go ahead and say enable. And uh, as you can see, I've got a bit of a message here. It says after I've enabled it, I can't turn it off again. And it's basically because of the way that it changes the BC environment in the background. OK, so please, please, please don't do this in a production environment to uh, to begin with. Do it in a sandbox environment, make sure you're happy with it, and then go ahead and use it in your production. Um, so let me go ahead and press yes here. And what I'm going to do is just open up a new version of uh, Business Central here, just because uh, of the message there that we received. It says you have to sign out and back in for the changes to take effect. Now, you can still use the old currency revaluation feature that's up to you um, you get um, you get to use the old one still after you've enabled the, the, the new one so I'll show you that a little bit later on when we're on the currencies page okay um, but for now what we'll do is just review some transactions that I've posted in preparation for this um, for this uh, video so what I'm going to do is go into my EUR customer here and if I go into their customer ledger entries, their balance, you'll see that we've got a single invoice that we've posted for them. And that is for 1200 euros. And the amount there um, in LCY is 774.96. Okay, so I've just posted a invoice uh, against my EUR customer. If I come into my vendors table, I go to my EUR vendor. I've done the same thing for them here. I've got an invoice and it's for 1200 euros and 774.96 um, GBP, which is my local currency. And then finally, just on my bank account ledger here, I want to show you I've got my EUR bank account here, which has a balance of 1000 euros and the amount LCY there is 64580. Okay, so these are transactions that I've posted prior to um, doing this video. And what we'll do in a moment is we'll just go ahead and revalue those um, transactions. Okay, um, so what I will do next is let's go into our currencies page and I can show you the report that we're going to use for this. Okay, um, so on the currencies page in the actions bar here see i've got the adjust exchange rate action under the home option there okay so if i go adjust exchange rates you'll see um i've got a little bit more options than sort of what what we used to have in the old version of this report um you've got um adjust uh, sorry i think that one was there all um all the time it's just adjust per entry preview posting and dimension posting okay so i'll talk through these in a second and just to to reiterate there i clicked the adjust exchange rate option to get to that report um, but if i do a search for adjust exchange rates 
what I can do here is access the old version of that report, right? You see, I don't have those additional options here. You can see this is um, report 595 if I do a zoom. And if I click into this one here, this is actually report 596. So even though I've enabled the new functionality, which is going to come out in update 26.0 there, um, I can still use the old version of the report. So just be, uh, be careful with that. OK, so let's get into running this report. I'll stay on the new version of the report and I'm just going to run through these fields here. So um, the starting date and ending date are the um, dates um, for the adjustment period. So usually what we would do is we would input an ending date here. So I'm going to go with the end of May. Um, because we're working in May 2024 in this environment. The starting date you can populate, but I guess usually you'd leave it open, uh, you'd leave it blank there, just in case you have any um, any invoices uh, which are um, outstanding from before your starting date, right? I guess you'd want to you'd wanna revalue them, um, but you can put a starting date in there if you want to. Um, the posting description is uh, this by default, so the adjustment of percent one and percent two exchange rate adjustment is what comes through to our general ledger entry description. And it's basically just going to turn the percent one and the percent two into, I think it's the currency and the amount. And uh, we do have a little bit of options there. I guess you can change those. Um, I will have a look to see if I can figure out what um, those percent um, signs translate into. And uh, I can I can pop that into the description of the video if I can find it. OK, so the posting date is usually the same as the ending date there. So it stays within that period um, document number. Make it something meaningful. Um, you can just call it currency adjustment 310524 or whatever you'd want it to be. OK, so um, now we've got the option to adjust customers, yes or no, vendors, yes or no, bank accounts, yes or no, right? So, you know, I've worked with a few customers, not everybody revalues all of their ledgers. It's up to us sort of how. Uh, how we want to do that, um, but I'm going to leave it ticked here to adjust customers, vendors and bank accounts um, so we can see how that works. Um, the adjust yield accounts for additional reporting currency. This is if you use an additional reporting currency on your business center environment, you can revalue those um, accounts if you want to. Um, adjustments can be made per entry um, that we have on the customer ledger or vendor ledger, or it can be made in, in, in sort of one um, in one go so uh, we can use this uh, this tick box to mention that and then very cool I love the preview posting here so that boolean is marked as yes at the moment and it basically means that when I press OK it won't post anything it will just give us a preview posting of what is going to happen so then uh, an interesting one here, I've, I've made some changes to BC over the years to accommodate this functionality but the dimension posting is what gets posted to our income statement with regards to the currency exchange rate gain or loss. OK, so you can choose to have either source um, entry dimensions, no dimensions or GL account dimensions. OK, so source entry means it's picked up from the source entry, the dimensions that is. Dim no dimensions speaks for itself. There are no dimensions on the uh, dimension posting here. Um, and GL account dimensions means it basically picks the dimensions from the general ledger code that we have for our unrealized gains or losses. So I'll show you that all in a second. OK, so I'm going to leave that as no dimensions. I don't have any dimension rules set up in here. You might need something different. Um, and what I'm going to do here is just select in the filters. I guess you wouldn't normally do this, but I'm going to select our Euro bank. Uh, I'm going to select our Euro customer and I'm going to select our Euro vendor. And equally here, I can put in a currency code of Euro as well, right? So I guess you wouldn't normally do this. I mean, you might, it depends on your, your sort of operations. But here, what we've said is I'm only um, adjusting the Euro currency and then drilling down further into my sub ledgers, we're only adjusting the Euro bank, the Euro customer and the Euro vendor. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Bear in mind, I've got the preview posting selected here. Let's go OK. And 
we've got a bit of an error. Uh, just sorry, thinking back, why did we get that error? It's because I didn't change the um, exchange rate. So um, I guess it's good because you may get this um, in, uh, in real life. The reason why there was nothing to change there is because I hadn't changed the exchange rate from that which I posted on the original transaction. OK, so what I'm going to do is let me just show you that I was going to show you this anyway, but I will uh, I'll show you this by going into the exchange rates here. And what is the exchange rate that's used during the foreign currency revaluation? Well, it's taken from the starting date compared to our adjustment period and the posting date. And then it's the adjust adjustment exchange rate amount and the relational adjustment exchange rate amount fields that are used to revalue those transactions. OK, and just to reiterate now, the reason why we got the message that we did is because I had posted our foreign currency documents for our currency vendor, uh, euro currency vendor, euro currency customer and euro currency bank account with this exchange rate. That's why it said there's nothing to adjust. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this to something a little bit different now. And to confirm there, guys, what I'm changing is the relational adjustment exchange rate amount. And I'm just changing the most relevant exchange rate here. Right. You might have exchange rates per day, per week. But I've just got one here for the 1st of uh, Jan 2024, and I've changed the value in the relational adjustment exchange rate amount. OK, so now let's go back and run our exchange rate again. So we should have all of the filters as they were. They look good. Let's go preview posting is yes. We'll go OK. And this time it's giving me another error. And sorry, I should have set this up. I'm just going to put in my unrealized gains and my unrealized losses accounts here. And we'll try that one more time. All looks good. OK, so now you see we have our posting preview. Um, so I've got my GL entries. If I come in here, I can drill down and review. The adjustment amounts there. So I've got one side there is the petty cash, which is linked to my bank account. The other side is the account that I put in as my unrealized gain or loss account. Then I've got my accounts receivable account, which is being adjusted. Again, the offset for that is my um, realized or gains loss account. Then finally, I've got my accounts payable account and I've got the um, the gains or loss account from the back of that as well. And we also get an exchange rate adjustment ledger entry. So we've just got three here based on the three transactions that, that we're revaluing. And it's telling me the currency factor here. So that's per the update. And I also have my bank account ledger entry and my detailed customer ledger, ledger entry and detailed vendor ledger entry. OK, so if I drill into these, it just gives me the amount LCY that is being adjusted per each of those transactions. And it tells me that it's an unrealized loss. OK, so they are the entries that we get. And I'm just going to go ahead and say preview posting is no. And I'll say OK. And it just tells me that one or more currency exchange rates have been adjusted. And if I just show you now, if I go into my GL registers, I've got an entry in here for exchange rate adjustment. And I can see all of the sub ledger entries linked here, right? So we, we went through that on the posting preview, so I won't spend too long on this, guys. But you'll see I've got all the same GL entries posted on the 31st of May. And then I've got my detailed customer and vendor ledger entry. Sorry, I don't see customer ledger entries underneath that as well. Um, and if I jump back here to my currencies page, I also have my exchange rate adjustment register. So I can go into there and see all of the exchange rate adjustments that have ever taken place. Right. And I've got number of adjusted customer ledger entries, number of adjusted vendor ledger entries here. And then I have my bank account transaction here as well. And I can drill down into this and it will show me the amounts that have been adjusted along with the entry type underneath each one of these transactions. So I've got an unrealized gain there and an unrealized loss against the transactions that I showed you earlier. Now, 
If I go back to those transactions that we reviewed to begin with, we won't review them all here, guys. But if I go into my customer that I had my invoice against, and what you'll see is the euro amount has stayed the same, but you can see the amount LCY has changed there. And if I go to the little fact box here and the detailed ledger entries, you can see that I have the unrealized gain here of 185.04. So I won't go through the vendor and the bank account ledger there, guys, but you get the idea. You can use this functionality to revalue your outstanding invoices and bank accounts across um, your, your business central ledgers. So that's everything that we wanted to run through. Um, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.